Hi everybody, my name's Chris. Welcome to my studio. In this video, I want to share a challenge I did recently called Washtober. Every day in the month of October, I painted a different watercolor painting. I was given a list of prompts and painted that word every day. Some of the paintings turned out pretty good, some of them not so good. But I'd like to share with you the lessons I learned along the way. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've put out a video. And that's mostly because for the last month, the month of October, I have been doing a challenge, a paint everyday challenge called Washtober. Uh, Washtober was invented, I think, by uh, another painter, a uh, watercolor artist in Israel. His name is Lee Ron, and I follow him. And when he posted early, uh, or actually late in September that he was gonna do this, I decided I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna paint every day. So here's a list of prompts that Lee Ron created. He put them out on the internet. And uh, you can see it's just 31 words uh, that are provided to give you a prompt, a maybe inspiration on what to paint. And you can interpret the word any way you want. And so when you look at other people's work, it's really interesting because you can see how other people interpret the word or what they decide to paint, so it's fun. So uh, for this particular challenge, I decided to uh, paint in my sketchbooks. I, I had one sketchbook I was still using, and so I finished that one, and then I moved on to a second one, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about those when I get to them. And I also started out uh, just on uh, individual pieces of 140 pound arches watercolor paper, which is what you see here. So I'm uh, not super organized, like I was painting on different types of paper and all that, but it's okay, because I was painting every day. And so that's what's important. So here's my very first painting in Washtober. The word was leaf. And there you go. I love using highly uh, complementary colors like the orange and the blue here. And uh, I liked how this turned out and did a little splashing of paint around the edges. This was my first one. The next word was ridge, which is a little bit um, less specific. You could interpret that word lots of ways. And so when I think of ridge, I think of a mountain near where I live, Mount Shuxon. It has a beautiful ridge line to it. And so I went ahead and painted that. This is one of my favorite paintings in the whole series. And I like the diffuse color, kind of soft color in the mountains, that aerial perspective because it's far away. And then it gets a little more um, vibrant as you get closer. This was the word ridge. After doing those two first paintings on loose paper, I decided to move into this sketchbook. And the third word was the word study. And when I think of study, it's uh, I every morning I try to get out my journal and I get out the Bible and I read and I study. And that's kind of one of the ways anyways that the word study, what that means to me. And this was the third day. Let's talk a little bit about the sketchbook before I go any further. This is a Be Creative, it's called. You can see the title here, Be Creative Watercolor Journal. It is 100% cotton paper. It's 140 pounds. So it's just like uh, very similar to the Arches paper that I use. It's a different brand, but it's put into a, a nice spiral bound uh, journal. And I like spiral bound because they open up and lay flat so that when you're painting or drawing, you can get a nice flat surface. And so that's this journal. Again, it's, I've been using it for a while, so it's partly filled. And um, let's go on to the next painting. This was day four and the word was tube. Once again, it was interpreted by different people different way, but when I think tube, I think tubes of watercolor paper. These are a couple of my Daniel Smith watercolor tubes. The next word was smile. And so I did a nice close up. This is uh, not taken from life. This was actually just, uh, I looked online and found a picture on unsplash.com. It's a place I often use for reference images. Word six was Zoom, and again, when I think of Zoom, I think of my Zoom camera. This is my Canon M50. Don't really like this one too much. I don't think I did a real good job on drawing. One thing, uh, one comment I'll make about my, my paintings is I always draw freehand. I'm not tracing these, and so eh, sometimes I don't get it right. The next word, day seven, was ripple. And so, of course, I thought of water. I put a bowl of water out. I did draw this from life. Uh, in my kitchen, 
Uh, I like some of the treatment of the drops, but I just think it's a little too busy and a little bit, I don't know, the colors aren't quite right, but it, it was a fun one. The next word was instinct, and I decided to draw my hand. There you go, something like that. And I thought instinct, again, it's a more abstract term. It could be used lots of different ways, but I was just thinking of the instinct maybe of a person when they might resist things happening in their life or instinctually grab onto things and hold on to them kind of selfishly. And um, so that was the word for me, instinct. And again, just drawing my hand. Uh, of course, my left hand, because I'm right-handed, so I was painting with my right. And uh, there you go. I got a lot of good feedback on this one. This was a really popular one. One of, uh, you know how you can count the likes on Instagram. And I was posting them on Instagram. I'll put the, um, oh, the address or URL to my Instagram account down below in the video description. You can take a look at it if you'd like. And I was kind of keeping track of which of these paintings was the most popular according to the number of people that liked it. And this was actually the highest rated uh, painting that I did the whole time. And I did like it. I liked it. I like the colors. I like the shadowing. I like how it turned out. And it's funny how when you get one that's really good, then you follow it up with ugh, something you don't like. And this, <laughs> I didn't like either of these. The word was sun. I did this one first. Didn't like it at all. Tried to do a sunflower for the word sun. You know, I had a lot of people like this one, but I just did not like it at all. And that goes to show you that just because you don't like something doesn't mean that others won't. I was I once again really surprised and I put it online and all of a sudden everyone started liking it. And I was like, all right, I guess other people like it. So don't, um, at least be open, I guess I should say, to the opinions of other people and whether they like your work or not um, because others may really enjoy even something you don't like that much. The next word on day 10 was the word palm. And once again, it was my hand, my left hand. I like painting hands. I also had this uh, ring here, uh, has a small cross inscribed on it. And so I really tried to emphasize that. You can see that in the painting there. Uh, also one of the paintings uh, that I did that got a lot of likes to it. And it was kind of a nice contrast to the other one I did. Day 11, these bright green eyes. I like this one. Uh, didn't get rated as high, but uh, just a nice close-up of a set of eyes. And uh, I like how it turned out. Day 12 is car. I actually drive a truck, so I went ahead and drew this. Oh man, I, I did this really quick. And you, know, you can see I didn't plan my drawing very well. I ran out of room on the right. And it was okay. I wasn't thrilled with it. But again, you are really pressed to draw every and paint every single day. And when you're working, as I do, I'm um, a teacher, boy, sometimes it's hard to fit in your drawing in the middle of the day. And so I just, I did this one quick, quickly. It's okay, but I, I didn't like it a lot. For the next painting, I moved from my sketchbook. For some reason, I don't know why, I moved and drew on a loose leaf piece of paper again. The word was persistence. I didn't know what to draw, so I looked up the word persistence in the dictionary and found that in some cultures, the word persistence is associated with a koi fish. And I've always wanted to paint one, so I went ahead and painted this. Persistence. The next word, day 14, was smell. And uh, again, did this one fairly quickly. Didn't like that much how it turned out, but it's okay. Now, here's a spread of uh, paintings that I liked a lot. Uh, day 15 was the word mailbox. And I really like the high contrast here between the really dark background and the lighter parts of the mailbox it really causes the mailbox to really stand out and uh, I just I like how it worked I like the colors I like everything about it got a lot of good feedback on this one thing I want to talk about as I go through these as well is just some of the things I learned uh, and some of the benefits I guess of doing a challenge like this and and really one of those things is just the fact that you're painting every day you are forcing yourself to paint every day whether you feel like it or not the downside of that is sometimes you feel rushed and some of your work isn't that good, but you know, that's just the way it is. Not every painting turns out. Um, and then sometimes you come across something like this and you really like how it turned out a lot, a lot. The next one as well is one that I really like, how it turned out real realistic, which isn't always the way I paint, but this is a dart frog, poison dart frog. And the word was dart on day 16. And so I painted this. Again, I didn't want to do a basic like dart, uh, like you throw against a dartboard. So I thought of something different and I really like this one 
a lot and got great feedback, bright colors. I like to use bright colors. But by painting every day, one of those benefits again is just that you get lots of brush miles is what the people like to say. Just that's the way you learn is lots and lots of practice. So that's the first benefit. The next word was phone on the 17th day. And this is, I wanted to do something um, different than my cell phone or whatever. And so I thought of a phone that we had on our wall when we were kids, harvest gold hung on the wall. And it was just kind of a uh, nostalgic. Uh, again, another benefit of doing these uh, painting challenges is that uh, you don't have to think about what to paint. You know, the word is given to you. And so you don't spend a lot of time or uh, don't waste a lot of time deciding what to paint. You just paint the word that's given to you. And uh, so uh, again, another benefit of doing this painting everyday challenge. I highly recommend it. The next word, day 18, was actually the word nostalgic. And boy, again, a word that could be interpreted lots of ways. But I, I looked around my house because again, I like to paint from real life if I can. And uh, I saw this painting sitting on, or, or portrait, actually a picture, a photograph, sitting on a table in my living room. And it's of my mom and her uh, four granddaughters. And I just always love this painting so much. It means so much to me. And so it's very nostalgic because uh, my mom is no longer with us. These little girls now are all in their 20s, all grown up. And, but I still uh, love this picture a lot. And so it, to me, it is nostalgic. The next word was letter, and so I had a letter sitting on my desk, and so I just painted it real quick. Another one and where I, I really was pressed for time, didn't spend a lot of time on this one at all. It was a very quick sketch, uh, but I was painting, and that's good. I was painting every day. I never missed a day in this entire thing, and so I'm pretty proud of myself for that. The next word on day 20 was focus. So I held up my Canon M50 in front of a mirror and took a picture of myself focusing the lens on that. Again, focusing on hands because I like to focus on hands. And, um, and the word is focus. Yeah, and I really got a lot of good feedback on this one as well. It was a real popular one. Another benefit of this kind of challenge is that you're painting in community. And so every one of these paintings, I scanned them and put them on Instagram, put the hashtag for Zoomtober, or sorry, um, for Washtober 2020. Uh, again, that uh, link to those uh, Instagram pages will be shared below. And when you do that, you get a lot of positive feedback from people, which can be very encouraging. Another one of my favorite ones was day 21, jeans. And again, I like to focus a bit more on details as opposed to painting the entire uh, pair of jeans. I decided to focus just on the back, back pocket and especially this uh, label, which uh, is kind of iconic uh, for Levi 501 uh, jeans. And um, I think they're pretty recognizable when you look at this. Day 22 was the word vase. And so again, painting from life in this painting. And I like to do that whenever possible. The next word was mystical. Again, a difficult word. word. It could be interpreted lots of ways. I had done this painting actually a couple days before, so I kind of cheated. It wasn't on that day. And I, it was done actually for my church, for an advent kind of theme where you see light in the darkness. I don't know. I, I couldn't really jive with the word mystical, but I did this instead and I thought it worked. And so this was day 33, or sorry, day 23. And day 24 is the word plan. And so this is a, again, a picture of my hand. You can see I painted my hand a lot, um, drawing on a plan or a blueprint for my house. This was the very last drawing that I did in this particular uh, journal. Again, this was the uh, B Creative Journal, 100% cotton, 140 pound cold pressed paper in a spiral journal. And so I had finished this journal, so I had to move on to the next one. My other journal here is a, if you can read it here, it's a Stillman and Burn beta series six by eight spiral bound cold press paper, but this is not 100% uh, cotton. This is actually a mixed media uh, paper, which is a uh, not cotton, but instead a um, cellulose type of paper made from wood pulp. I really don't like it as much uh, as painting on cotton, but I thought I'd give it a try for a sketchbook and I'll have links to both the sketchbooks in the description below. 
very first painting I did in this on day 25, the word was card. And I have these dot cards laying around my studio. And this is a Daniel Smith uh, dot card. And you just little dots of paint dried on there. And they uh, sell these or give them away so people can try out the different colors on a palette. I like the way this one turned out. The next word was delivery. And so I thought of a guy on a bike delivering food. And you can see how that one turned out here. Now, again, this is pretty illustrative of the difficulty I was having when I moved to this non-cotton paper. You can see I got a lot more blooms uh, where the watercolor and the water was blending. It's a lot, it's a little bit harder to paint on non-cotton paper. Now I was getting the hang of it and you know, I like to be able to paint on lots of different paper, but uh, I think it's more difficult to paint accurately and, and to avoid blooms when you're not on cotton paper. The next word was machine. And this is another one of those examples where I really didn't like this painting at all. But as soon as I put it up on Instagram, bang, I got all kinds of likes on it. And it actually was one of the most liked paintings that I did in this whole series. I don't know why. I don't really like it at all. But so, again, other people might like your work more than you do. And so just put it out there and share it with the world. Again, that's another one of the benefits of doing this is uh, just the feedback you can get from other people looking at your work. Gives you a different perspective. This is another spread of, of drawings that I really like here. Uh, this is the uh, day 28 and the word was bike. Again, focused in on just the front of the bike. I liked what I liked here was the contrast between the orangey colors and the more blue because they're complementary colors. They really tend to pop. I did the brick wall behind. Now, I always struggled with the brick wall because it was too busy. There was a point at which I didn't like it at all because it, it was like this color was the texture here was pretty busy. And then you had this busy checkered thing right behind it. So what I did here, and I thought it worked well, is has, the painting was almost done. And I took a light blue wash and I did a wash over the whole wall. Um, not the bike, but just the wall. And so what I did is it created this uh, bluish cast over the wall, which made it more subdued and made it recede a little bit. And then the sharpness of the rest of the bike tend to pop out at you. And then it really worked well as a technique. It's a technique that I think I'm going to use in the future. And I just kind of stumbled upon it and I liked how it turned out. The next word was log. And I live on property where there's a whole bunch of old logs that were once trees, uh, or we call them stumps. And this is a cedar stump on my property. And I really like how this turned out. Lots of good feedback on it. Again, I always strive to get a high contrast in my paintings. So I knew I had a uh, light up here. And so I wanted to contrast it with the dark in the background. Tried to contrast the dark inner section of the stump with the lighter sections here. Again, wherever there's high contrast in your painting, your eye will be drawn to that spot. And uh, so I think I, I did pretty good on this one. I like this one. The next word on day 30 was the word coin. And I painted this. It's actually a coin I brought home from Israel when I traveled there. And for the very final painting, I decided to paint a picture of myself. The word was status on the 31st of October. Again, a difficult word to interpret, but I thought, well, my status is me. <laughs> okay. And so I thought, hey, I like to do a self-portrait from time to time. This is okay. I've done lots of self-portraits and uh, this is not my favorite by any means, but um, I think that the brown, it got a little muddy and dirty here in certain places. Uh, I was using blue over the rest of the colors. And because I like to use a variety of colors and all, but it just looks like I got a dirty face here in some places. It didn't quite work. But overall, it's not bad. And again, this was something I did probably eh, in about an hour uh, of time or so. So that's it. That was my Washtober 2020 experience. Had the opportunity to paint 31 days in a row and to paint every day and to paint to prompts, words that I didn't choose, but someone else chose. Again, lots of great advantages to doing that. Uh, and it just gets you painting. So I really encourage you um, as much as possible to do this kind of thing. And by the way, this is my first painting in my November 2020 uh, challenge. And the word is elephant, obviously. And so I think I'm gonna keep go going with this challenge uh, and I'm doing a new challenge this time, and that's by the Doodle Wash, um, people that do Doodle Wash, and I'll put a link to their website as well, and they have a list of words that you can use for your, for your drawing prompts. So I encourage you, find a challenge, there's lots of them out there, 
uh, paint every day and don't worry too much about the results just paint and you will find that lots of repetition your style will start to emerge new techniques you'll learn uh, you'll learn you know what colors work well together you'll just learn to use your tools your brushes and your paper and your and all of that you'll learn how to do it and you can't learn without lots of practice so i really encourage you find a challenge and do it and try as much as you can to paint every day I hope you found this video to be helpful. If so, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for the next video. I try to put a new video out about once a week. Thanks. Have a great day.